Okay, we're going to take a look at the game Caesar in Gaul, uh, designed by Craig Johnson under the Camelot Games logo. Now, I want to make it clear right from the very start that this is not going to be a formal review of the game because I haven't played it with an opponent. I've only fooled around uh, with one scenario, read the rules, just trying to get familiar with the game. So all we can do in this video is take a look at the components and discuss generally how the game works. Now to begin with, um, I'll mention that um, the game, if it looks like a game designed from the 70s, that kind of makes sense. Because originally I believe the project was to be just an expansion of the old Avalon Hill game, Caesar's Legions. So this game looks a lot like Caesar's Legions and um, that's the reason why. It originally was going to be an expansion for that game. So let's take a look at the components uh, for Caesar and Gaul. Now one neat thing about the game is you get a fully mounted map done like in the old Avalon Hill style. So it's got to have a nice cardboard with this kind of linen backing. And as I mentioned, if it looks a lot like uh, Caesar's Legions, well, that's only understandable. So the graphics look very much like a, a game of the 1970s. I think uh, Caesar's Legions came out in 1976. So we'll take a closer look at the uh, board to Caesar and Gaul. As you can see, the board is beautifully mounted in the shiny style that was kind of uh, characteristic of Avalon Hill games in those days. You can see the province of Hispania delineated there. Up here you've got Britannia. We're looking upside down here because we're looking from the um, European point of view. And in green are the uh, names of the, uh, all the tribes. And we'll spin around here uh, because they're faced the other way. So you've got uh, the Lingonis, the Luci, the Rari, the Triboshi, or I'm not sure how to pronounce these. Uh, I believe that's the Rhine River there. So you get an idea of what the board is like. You can see the towns, sea hexes, and the marshes. So overall, a very nice looking game, and certainly um, reminiscent of Caesar's Legions. Okay, now I've carefully cut out the counters with an X-Acto knife um, and we'll be taking a closer look at them. Uh, what can I say about them? Well, the counters are very much like the counters that came uh, in Caesar's Legions. Now you're going to hear me say that often so I'll try not to repeat myself. So, uh, It's very much a remake of Caesar's Legions only with an expanded board and a lot more scenarios. But let's take a uh, a look at uh, the counters more closely. Okay, there's a legion counter near the town of Elysia. The legions are those 45-4 counters, the left being the combat number, of course, and the uh, number on the right, the movement factor. And to the right of that, that the associated uh, eagle counter. Okay, another legion added, uh, this time uh, Kind of my favorite, the 10th Legion, 45-4, with its associated eagle counter. Okay, here's an example of some of the leader counters. Julius Caesar uh, on the left, Vercingetorix on the right, and um, a leader for the Sequani tribe near the town of Bibracte. Now the um, symbols for the leaders, well, these counters do look like uh, counters from the 70s, as I mentioned, and keep mentioning, it's got a Caesar's Legions look to it, and I think this was intentional on the part of the designer. Uh, they use the standard uh, NATO symbols for the infantry, and um, you know, by today's standards, you know, they're not the colorful counters we see in the uh, a lot of the modern games. But you know, my view is like, so what? These things are functional, and uh, they work. So. Uh, Glitzy counters to me didn't wasn't always a selling point for me. Uh, as long as the counters work, that's fine by me. And these are perfectly serviceable leader counters. OK, 
Okay, here's an example of some of the German counters, three different colors, and uh, below them I've got the flipped side. So these are double-sided counters, so uh, for step reduction, of course. So the 10-4, it's flip side 5-4, same with the orange unit and the red unit. And some of the cavalry counters, again using the standard NATO symbols. And here's a shot of some of the specialty counters. Over on the left you can see a bridge counter. Uh, the white counters are supply uh, trains in various denominations. Up near the top you've got a neat fleet counter. There are fleets in the game. And the gray unit is a fortification or fort. And of course the uh, that's a siege tower. And down here you have catapults. Now I could go on just shooting every um, unit in the uh, counter mix, but that would be counterproductive and a little boring. Uh, just trying to give you an idea of what the counters are like. They're shiny, they are double-sided, and uh, they look like products of the 70s. But they're well, very well done, and they're quite, well, they're thick. They're thick enough, too, not those little thin ones. So the counters are perfectly serviceable. Okay, I should mention these uh, concealed movement counters, CM, and they're numbered. Um, you use these on the board to uh, hide your armies, of course. Most of the time you're going to be moving these counters on the boards, and uh, your actual troops will be placed on these cards. I'll try to zoom out here and show that. So on the left there you have the Roman card with all of the uh, legions marked. You actually put the legion counters on this card and use a concealed movement counter on the board. And over to the right are for the um, the Gauls in green. Okay, a word about the physical production of the game. You get tons of charts in the game. This is really a labor of love. I can tell the designer was really into it. He's put a lot into this game. So you get tons of charts. There's a new combat results table. Um, charts to show you scenarios and we'll look at those uh, in a moment. Uh, tribal morale charts most of them in full color too and I'll get to the cards I'll be showing you them too. This game does have cards and some pretty neat ones too. Okay, what about some of the scenarios here? There are a ton of scenarios in this game. For example the um, 57 BC campaign in Belgica, Belgium. Uh, 56 BC the campaign against the maritime tribes. You get two scenario cards for each scenario. One for the German setup, you can see in green, and one for the Roman setup there in red. So there's a mine of information on these cards alone. A summary of the campaign on the back and uh, an order of battle on the front. So here's one, uh, what? 55 BC, Crassus in Aquitania. I believe that's the son of the famous Crassus. I'm not an expert on this period. Um, here's 55 BC, the expulsion of the Germans and the invasion of Britannia. You've got a scenario here, 54 BC, the revolt of the Belgae and the second invasion of Britannia. Here's another one, uh, 53 BC, the subjugation of the Belgae. Again, order of battle on the front, historical information on the back. Another scenario, 52 BC, this is the one uh, I'm more familiar with, the revolt of Vercingetorix. Again, with historical commentary on the back. Uh, here's a 53 BC one, the subjugation of the Belgae. So, overall, you've got lots of scenarios in this game, plus a complete campaign game. Uh, I guess where you link all the scenarios together. This is a massive thing. Uh, a lot of work has been done in it. And uh, a whole new set of rules for those who want to play the whole thing out. Uh, this would be a huge investment of time if you were to play the campaign. But the campaign is there. And um, a lot of work has gone into it. Okay, for those of you who have uh, played Caesar's Legions or have the game, you may remember it had a tactical card system for doing battles. Uh, this same card system was used in the old Avalon Hill game 1776, and it was really cool. So when you got into a combat, not only did you compare odds and combat factors and leadership, 
Each of you had a tactical card to choose, which would modify the combat results table. For example, let's say the attacker picked reinforced left and the defender picked, uh, I don't know, uh, strength and right, something like that. It would change the combat odds or add modifiers to the combat results table. So these tactical cards were really cool. They were neat and they've been retained. And you can see that they um, have a neat picture of Vercingetorix on the back. The cards are smaller than a standard card deck, but they're fully laminated. They're a good quality. So those are the tactical cards to the game. Okay, the cards you see before you are the ones that depict the specific tribes in the game and the areas they come from. And as you can see, there's a heck of a lot of them. I didn't count them, but there's a lot of cards in this game. Again, um, with the same quality as the other ones, with a nice picture of, of the cover artwork on the back, Caesar and Gaul. So you've got the, um, well, the Belgica card with the tribe for the Bellavachi. Lots of them. Not exactly sure how those cards work yet. Uh, but there's a lot of them, and I'm going to show you uh, another deck of cards that comes with the game. Now these particular cards are used only in the campaign game. Um, they're called Senate cards, and they represent, I guess, senators' votes back in Rome. You can see their nice uh, pictures on the back again. And then there's these, um, what do you call them? Praetor cards, we'll say, plus five to mob influence. Here's a governor income, 500 coins per year. Here's a Quaestor card, income, 100 coins per month. These are all part of the campaign game, which I'm not familiar with. But um, they're to show the things that are happening back in Rome that affected Caesar's campaign. I mean, Caesar always had to be aware of what was going back in Rome because this affected the reinforcements he got and he, was, he very much had his political back to watch out for too. Um, so that's in the game too, the campaign game. These political cards and Senate cards. So the game does come with three decks of cards, which is pretty impressive. Okay, you get a nice uh, illustrated rule book, and it's done kind of in the old Avalon Hill style. Uh, almost the fonts are the same. And, um, you know, the color pictures of the units, um, nice color train effects chart, the paragraph style that Avalon Hill used to use back in those days. Again, illustrated. A lot of it will look like Caesar's Legions again because it is dried from that game. And there's a good example of. Uh, combat there using the, um, the tactical system. Now the weak point of this game I think is the rules. This is the edition that came with the game. Um, it's hmm, a little weak in some areas. I think if you had Caesar's Legions and played it before you probably have no trouble with this game. But a lot of us don't have Caesar's Legions and as a new game there were some things that needed to be fleshed out. Now, um, fortunately, on Board Game Geek and online, I think you can get the second edition of the rules, and that's what I've been using to learn the game. So, the weak spot, yeah, the rules um, could use a little bit of work. Uh, now, I should point out that for a veteran gamer, you know, um, older fellows like myself here that have been playing games since the 60s, uh, you can figure it out. But if, you, if this was your first war game, I think it would be a little bit daunting to learn. Uh, but don't be shy in, you know, to purchase the game just because of the rules. Like I said, the second edition are online, and there's even talk about a third edition polishing things even more. So um, I'll have to sum up here. I don't know what else to say about the game, except it's just a labor of love. The guys put a lot of work into it. Um, I think anyone who liked Caesar's Legions is certainly going to like this game. Again, going back to its look, yeah, it looks just like a game designed from the 70s, because that's uh, the parent game was designed in the 70s. So, for those of you who like Caesar's Legions, I think you'd like this game. The, the campaign game is something I'd like to tackle one day, but it's a daunting prospect trying to link all those scenarios together. So, um, all I can say to the designer is well done and um, a lot of work went into it and it shows it. So the game um, is Caesar and Gaul and it's available from Camelot Games.